then that one of the founders of the Tea Party movement, Carl Denninger, calls all of this a joke. We originally began with the premise that fraud is wrong, theft is wrong, and it stayed that way for about a month, and then the moneyed interest came in, and they basically took it back. And as far as I can tell, they did it by saying, look, if uh, you, know, you go down this road, then we won't get any more campaign contributions, and so the Republican Party essentially put the kibosh on this, got their people in and co-opted the Tea Party. Mr. Denninger used slightly more colorful language in a blog entry titled, To the Tea Party, Go Screw Yourself calling out Sarah Palin, Newt Gingrich, Bob Barr, and his word, not mine, douchebag, his word, not mine, groups such as the Tea Party Patriots, blaming them for focusing on, quote, guns, gays, God, instead of the group's original mission. Tea Party my ass, he wrote. This was nothing other than the Republican Party stealing the anger of a population that was fed up with the Republican Party's own theft of their tax money at gunpoint to bail out the robbers of Wall Street and fraudulently redirecting it back toward electing the very people who stole all the blanking money. Wow. Time now to call in Thomas Frank, author of What's the Matter with Kansas and The Wrecking Crew, How Conservatives Rule. Good evening to you, sir. And how are you today, Keith? Uh, I'm stunned by Mr. Denninger's uh, comments. Will they have any impact, or is the Tea Party really kind of a, a modern, bloodless French Revolution, and he just gets to go to the virtual guillotine with everybody else? <laughs> Look, it's a, no. It's not uh, what, what he's uh, that he's that he's denouncing them. Is yeah. that going to have an impact? No. Um, I, I, I would I would say not. And I would also even. Uh, I would disagree with him to some degree. I think his heart's in the right place. I like the things he's saying. I, I certainly like the way he's expressing it. But I went to that first Tea Party rally back in February of '09, the one across the street from the White House. It's the same people that are there today. It was a bunch of guys from Dick Armey's group. It was a bunch of, you know, uh, the sort of conservative think tank think tank people from here in D.C. You know, uh, a lot of people in three cornered hats. You mm -hmm. know, it, it was. It, it's weird how how stable the thing has has remained. I mean, you've got a lot of. Uh, it's accreted a lot of strange characters over the last few months. I mean, like Christine O'Donnell, people like yeah. that. But, yeah. Uh, as to Ms. O'Donnell, in addition to thinking that she won the debate over whether or not separation of church and state is mentioned in the First Amendment, she also claims she wanted to kill the I'm Not a Witch ad before it ran. If the I'm Not a Witch ad had worked, would she be saying that? Uh, no, well, of course not. You know, nobody ever wants to. You know, when, when someone d designs a lousy ad campaign, they all want to distance themselves. You know, hot potato. They want to get rid of it all uh, as quickly as they can. But th there's something that uh, that that about Christine O'Donnell that I think it's important to bring up. I mean, she's a lot of fun to talk about. It's it's great fun to you know to to, to make fun of her. And she says she you know she's constantly got her foot in her mouth and she's always saying stupid things. And here's what I'm what I'm getting at, Keith. Ever since I have been paying attention to politics, liberals like you and me have mm -hmm. been, well, I don't know, liberals like me. I'm sorry, I'm just, I shouldn't, I shouldn't, uh, I, I shouldn't, I am, I am the, the problem in America, right? I'm the liberal. <laughs> but we, people like me have been making fun of conservatives for, for being dumb, for getting things wrong. They, they sold all these books about Ronald Reagan, you know, misremembering things. You know this, we've been making fun of them for their spelling errors on their signs at the Tea Party rallies. And it's a blast, you know, to, 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 to pick, you know, to, to to make fun of someone like Sarah Palin or something like that. But when we do that, you got to remember their critique of us is all ready to go. You know, the liberal elite, right? Mm -hmm. These these uh, these these eggheads. These uh, they call us the ruling class. You know, people that went to people that, that went to college and think they're smarter than you. Tenth so, grade people it, went it, to the tenth grade. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, it, it's mm -hmm. it is it is ridiculous, but it's also it works. You got to remember that this whenever we criticize them for for slip ups like that, we you know we come off looking like. Um, uh, but, uh, snobs. but but in one case it may not be lack of knowledge that that sound bite of Mr. Runyon there's a subtext to that when uh, yes. ultra conservatives say Dred Scott there's there is a dog whistle to that that has something to do with Roe v. Wade right well there's always whenever the conservatives uh, bring up the issue of of slavery and they do this all the time mm -hmm. especially when I when I used to uh, follow conservatism closely at a local level back in Kansas they were forever talking about things like that and about um, you know the abolitionist movement, and they would identify themselves with that movement, and it's all, it all goes back to uh, to the, the anti-abortion movement. It's a way of talking about the anti-abortion movement that's not you know as controversial. Thomas Frank, <laughs> I'm so, sorry to interrupt <laughs> you there. It's the Dred Scott decision. Yeah, I, it, it, it's like you know, 
All right. <laughs> this just in, Dred Scott was decided the wrong way by uh, Chief Justice Tawney. Uh, the, speaker of the, uh, uh, the Speaker of the House is joining us later. Thomas Frank, the author of The Wrecking Crew, How Conservatives Rule, has just joined us now. Thank you again, sir. Sure thing.